One could argue that many of the problems Speaker Kevin McCarthy faces seem to be of his own making. To get the job of Speaker, he had to hand over a lot of his power. But then there's the question of how do you solve a problem like George? George Santos, that is. The Republicans' House majority is small, and George, at least that's what we think his name is, won a district that could easily go back to the Democrats if George resigns and a special election were held. So Kevin McCarthy's digging in. Tonight, new reporting from the New York Times showed that the chaos surrounding George started well before he won his seat in the House. In late 2021, George's own campaign ran a background study on him, which is a routine practice that's meant to uncover any liabilities before the opposition does. The report showed, quote, a pattern of deception that cut to the heart of the image that he had cultivated as a wealthy financier. It goes on. Some of Mr. Santos's own vendors were so alarmed that they urged him to drop out of the race and warned that he could risk public humiliation by continuing. When Mr. Santos disputed key findings and vowed to continue running, members of the campaign team quit, end quote. I'm having trouble delivering this uh, report to you. Another report today traces the chaos around George even earlier. Um, this is good. You need to be sitting down for this or at least holding on to something and don't drink anything for a second. Patch Media reports, quote, two former Santos roommates told Patch several items went missing while they lived with Santos, including phones, expensive dress shirts, and checks from a checkbook. Also allegedly stolen by George, according to these two men. This Burberry scarf that George wore to a pro-Trump rally in Washington, D.C. on January the 5th, 2021, just one day before the January 6th attack on the Capitol. So how do you solve a problem? like George. Joining us now is Jacqueline Sweet. She's a reporter with Patch who wrote that report after talking to George Santos's old roommates. I mean, at some point, Jacqueline, welcome to the show. At some point, you know, like in the interview, do you just stop? Like, do you just stop recording? Do you stop asking questions? Because everything you ask about George Santos ends up weirder than the last thing you already knew. It's true. It's been a little bit of a wild ride. And this started about a month ago. And I remember the first week thinking, this is crazy. There's something new every day. And now it's a month later and it's still true. I'm learning new things every day that I could not really have imagined the day before. And at what point does your jaw drop? Like when you're talking to these people about the things that they know about George Santos, because everything is surprising, right? Somebody said to me, uh, like, you know, the only thing he's not lying about is his name. And it turns out he might be lying about that, too. What, what, what are the what's the stuff you heard from these these roommates and friends that made you stop in your tracks? Um, I think some of the, they, they often, I've heard so many stories and they're, they have a lot of similarities. Um, one thing that sh struck all the people that I talked to was the audacity that they describe things. They say things being stolen and then they would do, they would confront Congressman Santos and he often would just deny or he would blame someone else and, and they I repeatedly heard sort of their they're coming to terms with feeling that they were defrauded and the feeling that they were scammed by someone they trusted. So it, in some ways, it's funny. But to these people, it actually was it funny at the time. Are, are they surprised? Are they shocked that he made it through an election and got elected and continues? I mean, what, what or, or is it one of these things where, yeah, that's George. He sort of lies his way through life. I think the answer is both. So I've talked to people. So a lot of these people, most, I would say all of them were not looking for, they don't have an ax to grind. They don't have a political agenda. Um, many of them weren't really aware that he was running for Congress in 2020. Some of them are in Brazil. Some of them are learning things now. And they're actually, they're kind of coming to terms with what they knew, what's true, what isn't true. They're comparing notes with other people. Um, they're kind of learning it as as we're learning it. Um, so yeah, sometimes they're shocked. Um, they can't believe that he's a congressman from the Anthony DeVolder, George Santos that they knew. But they're also not, they tell me that they're not shocked by the accusations of the lying. Let me ask you about this. Um, in your reporting, one of the things you talk about is that he had this sort of opposition research done, right, on yourself, which which happens uh, sometimes when people run so they know what their liabilities are so they can prepare for it so they're not shocked by a reporter like you who all of a sudden asks a question. They know they know it's coming. Why even bother paying for that kind of stuff? It sounds like it, the opposition research worked. It came up with a good information, and Santos just ignored it and denied it. 
Um, yeah, so at the Times came out with that, and they actually looked at what was actually found and what the reaction was. And I think a lot of that is still unfolding. There are still questions there. People have questions about what was known, what wasn't known. Um, so I think we're still learning more and more about that. Um, an interesting thing someone told me that strikes me now with uh, what we're learning in terms of that is they mentioned that he would often say completely ludicrous things to them. This is what they said. And he would just say it with a very straight face. And he, he, he the person told me that he almost was daring them to question it. Hmm. 